Berkshire is for one stock we all look up to, and listening to its annual meetings is just wonderful. But Buffett has severely shrank its buyback program, so you gotta think, does Warren Buffett think the stock is overpriced? Let's look into that. First of all, as always, yes, the cash position at Berkshire is massive. 126 billion alone in short-term treasury bills, they yield around 5%, so that is around 6 billion dollars per year in free money for them. Cash in total they have around 150 billion, 175 if you count investments in fixed maturity. But what a lot of people forget, they just look at the cash amount they have. They also have a lot of debt. In total 120 billion of debt. So while yes, they have a huge net cash position, it is not as big as the media portrays it. And when it comes to analyzing Berkshire, there are always two parts you need to look at. One, the investment portfolio and two, the normal business. And let's look at how the normal business is developing. In total, revenues up huge, from 76 billion last year's quarter to 93 billion now. But that is not normal growth. Berkshire has acquired more of PTC, Pilot Traveler Center. They had a minority stake in it before, but now because they own 80%, they treat it as their own business when it comes to revenue reporting. So 13 billion of this, that is now extra this year, wasn't there last year. Even if you take that away, you would be at 80 billion, that is still 4 billion more in revenue than last year. That comes mostly from the insurance business. While the growth rate is higher than normal, it is not gigantic as this portrays it to be. These huge acquisitions happen from time to time for Berkshire. They're not that common. Here we also see the second part of the portfolio, the investment income. This includes the dividends and the interest they get. Of course, the interest is very high. They get around 6 billion per year in interest right now. So of this 12 billion annualized, around half right now is interest income. And when we look at the portfolio, there is nothing new. They have been a net seller of stocks this quarter. They sold some in Chevron, sold some in HP, Aon, Amazon, and they added a few tiny positions, but these are probably not Manga or Buffett positions. When it comes to positions that are this small, usually it's a TED and or TOT investment. There are two money managers at Berkshire. They usually deal with very small positions, but despite selling net stocks, the portfolio keeps on growing. It is up another 10 billion since last year. This does not include the dividends they have received in the meantime, so that portfolio just keeps on developing very well. So of all, everything great at Berkshire. And when we look at this, both parts of a business are very reliable and don't have a lot of risk. Some segments over time are not performing as well as the other ones, but over time we can just see steady revenue growth. Berkshire is not a company you should look at year over year, you should look decade over decade. There's some irregularities here, this is just because of an accounting change, but if we look at the free cash flow for example, which is not heavily influenced by accounting, we can just see it is just a steady upward growth. They have a very stable business, a very stable portfolio, and this is also what I like. There are no big surprises here. It doesn't rely on one big product hit. But one big criticism with Berkshire is the age of Buffett and Manga. They are fairly old. While we wish them a long and happy life, which they already had, but we hope it is gonna be even longer. Eventually, there is the time where they will either retire or die. And a lot of people say Berkshire is gonna go down with that. Their portfolio might not perform as well. For example, Ted and Todd, who are currently working for the portfolio, I don't think they're as good as investors as Warren Buffett and Charlie Manga. But that is only part of a business, and it will still probably continue well. They're not bad investors. They're certainly better than I am, for sure. I mean, they're recognized by Manga and Buffett. I can't claim that of myself. And the business strategy is gonna continue just like it is right now. It is known that Greg Abel is gonna be the successor of Warren Buffett because he's using Buffett's style of management. Don't touch the businesses that you don't know anything about. Don't interfere with the managers and other businesses. These businesses are run very separately. Buffett doesn't tell them what to do. And Greg Abel is gonna do the same thing. He's an amazing manager. And I think under him, it will continue the same. The business is gonna continue to operate just like like it has before. Well, yes, maybe it will have less portfolio returns. The company is gonna keep on growing. So the fear that as soon as Manga and Buffett are gone, the company is gonna go worthless, that is not the case. The company is gonna be in good hands. But now when it comes to valuing Berkshire, there are two ways we can value it. One is we can take the portfolio value and deduct this from the market cap and just look at the operating business versus that. Or this is the method that Buffett would prefer because he doesn't see this as stock investments. He sees this as partial owned businesses. I went through the portfolio, took how many shares they had and looked how much of a net income of a company do they own? How much of Apple's net income belongs to them? How much of Bank of America's? How much of American Express? This is how Warren Buffett looks at investments. First of all, let's look at the normal operating business though. And here we need to look at the income of the operating businesses because if we look at the net income, it gets heavily skewed by investment losses and gains. And here we can see they made 12 billion last year. We need to take out some of investment income because that is dividends. And if we look at how much of a net income of the companies in the portfolio they earn, we would count those dividends 
dividends double. Let's put this as 1 billion per quarter, just an interest income. That is less than they earn right now with 6 billion, but interest rates are unusually high, so let's have a lower number. Well, that would bring it down by around 2 billion, so it would be around 10 billion. And that is before taxes, let's say that is 8 billion in normalized income that they have. That times 4 is 32 billion, and I looked through most of the big holdings they have, and it is around 18 billion in net income that they get from all the companies they have in their portfolio. I excluded some, mostly some of the smaller holdings, because at some point it just doesn't impact the company that much more. So overall, when we combine the 32 billion plus the 18 billion, we come to around 50 billion. Berkshire's core business grows by around 5 to 6 percent per year. Sometimes it's a bit higher, sometimes it's a bit lower. Let's take 4 to be conservative. Berkshire usually buys around 1 to 2 percent of shares back, so that would be 6. And the portfolio usually has a slightly higher growth rate, so that is just another extra percentage. So that will bring me to around 7 percent growth. 17 multiple, it is not very high, but it is a fantastic company. Great companies with a big mode get a higher multiple. That with a 10% required return would give us a market cap of $602 billion that we would be willing to pay. Currently Berkshire is trading at 787. With these numbers we would get around a 7% return, which is not bad. For a very conservative stock like Berkshire, this is actually okay. Now what if it goes better? Slightly higher growth rate. Then for a higher growing stock, 20 multiple. Well yes, then we would get a 10% return. But 9% revenue growth and 8% afterwards for 10 years, for Berkshire, the company is already very big. It is going to be very hard to hit that. Now what if it goes worse, revenue growth slows down, buybacks gets shrinking down, the portfolio doesn't continue to perform as well, maybe some issues with Apple, I mean it's 50% of their portfolio, so if something goes wrong there, it's going to heavily impact their portfolio. Terminal multiple of 15, it's still a great company, but slower growing, so maybe 50 multiple. Well then, only 411 billion in market cap. So in total, would I buy Berkshire right now? No. Would I want to if I want a very stable portfolio, which is very conservative and very low risk? Yes, I would. I'm fairly young. I have many years to go in my life. I can invest in a few riskier companies. Berkshire is basically the most conservative company you can get other than just investing in T-bills. So I'm going to pass on it. If it falls by a lot, maybe it's great to pick up. But usually the issue with Berkshire is if it comes down to the point where it is a buy for me, there is such a big crisis like 2020, for example, that other stocks are way more undervalued than Berkshire. Probably Berkshire is never gonna go in my portfolio, sadly. It is a fantastic company. I would love to own it at a great price, but I just have other buys at the moment. There's nothing wrong with having Berkshire in their portfolio. No one is gonna criticize you for it. If I do, they're stupid. So what do you think? Write it down below. Have a good day.